everyone, it's Justine and welcome to a new video tutorial on five card hacks that blew my mind when I discovered them. I hope you'll have some fun and maybe discover a new technique as well. Today, since it's part of my April collaboration series, I have a video linked below to Harry's Craft Room and you can check out her video, which I'm sure will be fantastic. So let's drive straight into DIY embossing powder. So when I first got embossing powder, I thought that I had to have every color of the rainbow. But little did I know you could actually simply just use your regular dye ink pads and then emboss over top. So I'm going to be using the shiplap stamp from Concord and Ninth to show you this technique today. So I'm going to grab a stamp that has a fair amount of solid space on it since I think this shows off the technique the most. I'm going to be using some ink from Catherine Pooler and I'm going to be stamping down here onto the cardstock. Now Catherine's inks do stay wet for a little bit so if I were to just take some embossing powder and pour it on top right now it would work. However, I like to be more on the safe side when I do this technique. So I stamp it first with some color. I wipe off my stamp and then I stamp using some embossing ink and that way I know for sure the ink's going to be nice and sticky and the clear embossing powder is going to stick on top. And I am using a misty so I get perfect placement when I try to double stamp something without having any issues of it not lining up properly. So I then went ahead and I grabbed a scratch piece of computer paper and then I grabbed some of the clear embossing powder to pour over top and I just flick the cardstock here to get any excess embossing powder off that also was new to me at one point and then I just heated it up and it melted. So you get that embossed look of an image without having to have 800 different colors of embossing powder. For me personally, I only had gold, silver, clear, and white for the longest time. And I was so lucky enough to be contacted by a couple of companies to try theirs out and things like that. So I do have some colors and I see the value in them, but if you're on a budget, this is a perfect tip for you. I embellished this card with some white Nouveau drops and I used the shiplap stamp from Concord and Ninth to create the background. The next tip that I have is the color sequins or pearls. So if you are also on a limited budget, this is great. You can add some white sequins or pearls and you can actually color them. So I have here a card, two cards actually, that I've created already. And I'm going to show these cards or how to stamp these flowers in a my one of my next hacks in this video. So if you have something like sequins or metal or anything that's a non-porous surface, you have to use an alcohol ink. Now I'm using Copic markers in this video, but you could use Altenew alcohol markers, Spectrum Noir, any sort of brand will work. You don't have to buy the highest quality one or the most expensive at all. So all you need to do is just go ahead and color. You just add this, let them dry for a couple of seconds, and then they're all ready to go for your cards. So for example, this card here, I had gone to my stash to look for some sequins that were this orange color and realized I didn't have any. I didn't have any embellishments in this color, not even Nouveau drops. So I went ahead and just colored some all by myself, and I'm using my tweezers just to kind of keep them from moving around. My tweezers also come in handy when it comes to placement. I added a couple of dots of liquid glue so it gives me time to work and then I place them on there. A funny story about this is I got the craft pick or like the sequin pick from Marvi Ushida, I think it was and it has this sort of almost like a gum at the end of it and it sticks to your sequins so they're easier to place and me I thought the gummy part of it was part of the packaging and I completely took it off so now I have a stylus pen instead of a sequin picker upper so that's why I just stick with my tweezers maybe I'll order one again in the future but I really think this is a great idea for being able to add custom colors to really match up your cards really well and it's a great way to save money on having all sorts of colors on sequins. The next one are dream drops on black. So I was pretty amazed. This creativation I was able to go and demo at the tonic booth and I had no clue what I was going to be demoing and I got these dream drops um, on the, the bottles. They look like Nouveau drops and you can use them like Nouveau drops so you can make you know your usual enamel bits on top of cards things like that but I, I didn't know with the dream drops is that when you spread them like a paste they turn into this metallic iridescent color that is absolutely stunning 
And so I'm just adding a whole bunch of the drops all over. You could see they come in colors like light pink and gold and white and green. And there are, I believe, six different colors out on the market now. And they are absolutely stunning. You can use them on white cardstock. They'll keep that color. They look almost, they look like an iridescent version of the color. But when you put them on black cardstock, they completely change. So they, some of them turn into a completely opposite different color, but they're so gorgeous. And I thought it would be fun to just spread them across this black backsplash stencil. And you'll see me, I've used this stencil a few different times. Uh, this month. And so I'm just going to spread these with the palette knife from Tonic, which I'm obsessed with right now for spreading pastes. I know you could just buy a regular kitchen spatula, but I like the fact that I have a dedicated one for my craft room that is a good size for my hand. And I'm just going to spread these all over the stencil and you'll see just how gorgeous these look. So you can see that they really are truly just a completely different color and I absolutely loved it when I took off the stencil and looked at this background once it was all, well I pulled off the stencil, let it dry, sorry. Then I glued it onto a card base and added this beautiful thank you sentiment to it. My next hack is a hack for a stamping tool. So I'm using the layered stamp Misty hack and layered stamps I absolutely adore, but I find them too much work to set up to just stamp one flower. That just seems like a waste of time to me when I can just stamp four at the same time. So I grabbed a piece of six by six cardstock and I'm gonna stamp my image as I normally would. So I am using some Catherine Puller inks for this here and I am going to stamp the first layer and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and then each time I'm just going to rotate it until it goes all the way back to the other side. And that way when I go ahead and I line up my next layer, I only have to layer it once and I get four flowers out of the deal. This just seems like a lot better use of my time and I can set these off to the side if I ever feel like I don't need them for my project that I'm doing. So once again, just the one that's in the corner, it actually doesn't matter which one you line it up on, and pick it up with the Misty Stamping Tool. Then you just go ahead and stamp all four of those here. So I think this is an amazing time-saving technique and definitely makes these layering flowers a little less daunting when you know that you're getting four out of the deal when you're doing all this work. This is one of my favorite layering stamps of all time, Peruvian Lily from Altenew. I think it's just so stunning and realistic looking and when it's all finished, I'm amazed every time. I have done it using several different color combinations as well. So I've decided obviously to speed you up for this portion of the video since I'm just doing the same thing each time. Spinning my cardstock from each corner to corner, picking up the new stamp, layering it again. And I'm using a mixture of all the different pink colors that Catherine Pooler has in her line or any sort of pinky orange colors. And I think that this card turns out to be fantastic. So I hope you find that too. The last little bit that I had stamped on there, I had originally stamped in gray and I found that it was a little bit too dull. It didn't bring out the colors as much as I had hoped. So when I had stamped this last little bit of the stamp here in black, I realized what kind of an amazing contrast it had with the pink that I had to go back in and do those in black again. I added this to a card panel. This is something I've been doing a lot and it's going way back to basics, but I've been scoring my cardstock to give it some texture. So you'll notice I have some straight lines on the background that I've done. And I've done that with a simple um, scoring feature on my paper trimmer, or you could do it with a bone folder and a score pal, or even a ruler <laughs> and a bone folder. Completely up to you. But when I was shown this, I just thought it was the most elegant thing for adding texture on white cardstock when things are looking a little bare. And it doesn't distract really from those flowers. I think it just accentuates everything. My last hack here is embossing on vellum as well as embossing on acetate. Both of them work. So if you're gonna use acetate, that's totally fine, but it has to be heat resistant acetate. If not, you're gonna run into issues. I'm going to be using vellum for this video and Make sure that you prep everything with an embossing bag. It's so important that there's no static and I find vellum and acetate to be one of the most stacked staticky papers there are. So you just want to make sure you de-staticize? Is that the word? 
I don't even know. You want to get the static away from your cardstock so your embossing powder doesn't stick everywhere. So you're just going to emboss as you would normally with paper. You're just going to handle the heating part a little bit differently. So I'm stamping this beautiful stamp here from Catherine Pooler and I'm going to be covering it with some Conversation Hearts embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. This is a super vibrant pink, neon pink embossing powder that I had to try. Since I really love Brutus Monroe's embossing powders, I do try and get the new colors when they come out, despite what I said in my first hack. But again, it's just more of a budget-friendly thing, the first hack than anything. If you want all the colors of embossing powder and they bring you joy and make you happy, why not? So I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of the remaining embossing powder. I now have it on top of my vellum. And when you go heat it up, now this is the part that can be a little tricky. Make sure your heat gun or whatever you're using, your heat tool, has been running for about a full minute. You want to have it at its hottest possible and then you want to go very quick, as quick as you can on the vellum. So it's not that it's going to melt per se, but it does warp and so you want to avoid that by having it really just um, on there for a limited amount of time. I didn't speed up the heat process here just to show you how quickly I am moving the heat tool over top of my embossing powder. And I got pretty limited warping, really quite minimal on the edges. And so I ended up adding it to a piece of white cardstock. I added this beautiful hugs die from Concord and Ninth, and I even found a use for those flowers that I had done in the previous hack and added a few Nouveau drops there to the fronts of the cards. Now don't forget that all of my supplies are listed in the video description below if you're interested. I also have full details of which stamps, dies, and everything that I used on my blog since the hacks went a little bit quick today. And don't forget that this is a video collab, so head over to the video below in my video description. Subscribe, like, comment on her video, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. I would totally appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I hope you have a great day. If you want to see more hack videos, please let me know in the video description below.